Hi, I'm Brianna Santiago. And I'm Riley Freed. And welcome back to the Midweek Update, the BB show that brings you closer to the people and places in and around the Mepham community. This week on Megui Update, we go inside the Pirates football team and what it's like for a senior facing a season-ending injury. We put ourselves in the shoes of some of our science teachers to learn what it's like when they no longer get to keep the rooms they've had for years. And we find out what's to deal with all the chocolate filling our hallways. But first, Kais Aini gets to the bottom of the addiction that is constantly lurking every time we get a notification on our phone or we feel the need to snap our friends. Cell phone addiction. What if I told you there existed an object so powerful it could keep us distracted from reality for several hours of our lives? That object is right here, sitting in our back pockets only to trap us in its bewitching powers. Phone addiction is a real issue that affects society today, especially within a school. Students get easily distracted by the devices when they could be doing classwork or other important matters. Social media, games, and other platforms draw students to their devices. Students seem to be struggling with putting down their phones, and the effects are displayed through other activities. How many hours a day would you say you spend on your phone? Um, probably about um, five at most, five or six. I would say maybe like ten, usually on an average school day. How many hours a day would you say you spend on your phone? Students are not just using their phones in the bathroom or the hallways, but also in the classroom. Instead of paying attention to the lesson in front of them, students are glued to what lies on their screens. There have been ideas through that students can learn from in order to limit their phone usage. Well, some of the suggestions um, have been to give yourself some self-monitoring, meaning when you're home, um, Ideally, it would be conducive for the entire family to have a cell phone charging station where everybody puts their cell phone where they can get charged, but it's away from their bodies, um, maybe just you know, on the kitchen counter. And give yourself some actual space between you and the, the apparatus so that you can do your work. As overpowering as cell phone addiction may seem, there still exist ways for students to become less hooked on these devices. From b and I've been Luke Melfa. We all have cell phones, and they're always in our hands and in our pockets, but how often do we really think about how much we rely on them? Kais Aini joins us in the studio right now. Welcome, Kais. What made you want to report this important story? Well, I've noticed cell phones have been affecting my friends and family and all the people around me, and that there are solutions to this situation. What is something you learned while reporting this story? Something I've learned is that it's just not it's just not me that's being affected. It's students around the community and parents and teachers and everyone else. Amazing work, Kais. Something to really think about the next time we get that notification that we just have to check. Next, Spencer Mattis takes us inside the classrooms at Mepham to look at one of the hurdles our teachers have to deal with that we students know nothing about. Classrooms are a teacher's second home in school. It is their space to organize their materials and create a personal learning environment. However, some teachers have been displaced from their original rooms. This has caused them to scramble between one or more unfamiliar rooms and deal with new environments. Being in a brand new room for part of the day has presented many challenges for educators. Uh, the major problem with the new room is that it's not very conducive to science classes that have labs. Relatively new classroom definitely has some ups and downs. I do like the third floor, it's quiet up here, but I was downstairs for pretty much 17 years I was in that room, so the adjustment was, was tough. It's a longer room, it's not a wide room. Through ingenuity and determination, the teachers have adapted to the new conditions presented before them. I'm doing the best I can. That's all I really can do. Um, the classroom that I'm in for a living environment and college genetics is far from ideal, but um, as a teacher you always have to modify, adjust, and do the best you can with what you've got. So far, so good. This room, uh, over the last, you know, let's say two years or so, I've grown to really love it. And now I'm next door in 327, which is a sideways room. So now I have the best of both worlds. I have a long room and a sideways room. No matter the challenge, the teachers are able to persevere. For BMB, I'm Spencer Mattis.
Thanks, Spencer. I spend so much time worried that I have all my things going between classes, but I never stop to think of my teachers that also have to make sure they have everything they need for each class. Absolutely. Next, Kenny Frankies goes on the football field with senior James Murray, who almost lost his senior season due to an injury. No athlete wants to hear that their season will be coming to a short end. Uh, it's one of the most unfortunate things that happens um, to an athlete. That's why it's, it's, uh, it's really important to make the most out of the days that you do get and the time that you do get. Oh, I'd be absolutely devastated. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I would do with myself, man. Senior James Murray tells us what was going through his mind when he heard his season would be coming to a close. I was devastated. I thought I was going to lose the sport that I loved for since I was four years old. And I was in the car crying with my mom. She was telling me everything was going to be okay, but I wasn't sure. But little did James know, this was not the end of his season. I was the happiest person in the world to find out that I was able to play the sport again. James is excited to be back on the field and knows how he would like to end his season. It's no other way to end the season but to win the LIC with me and my team. From b, &B I have been Kenny Frankies. Thanks, Kenny. So happy for James that he's able to keep playing after the injury. And you and the rest of the Mepham community can come support James and the rest of the football Pirates as they take on Manhasset at 1 o'clock on Saturday in the opening round of the playoffs. Also, at 1 p.m. on Saturday, the Belmore Merrick Lady Sharks take on the competition in the county championships at the Aquatic Center at Eisenhower Park. A big weekend of Mepham sports ahead of us. Before we go to BMB's, Casey Farr t tries to answer an age-old question, why is there so much chocolate for sale in school? You may have wondered, why is everyone selling chocolate? Is it even healthy? And why don't I have enough money to buy any? BMB selling these boxes of chocolate in order to get members of the club to DC. BMB is selling chocolate as uh, a fundraiser because uh, in March we're going to Washington D.C. as part of the Student Television Network's National Convention, and uh, we're raising money. It's uh, it's expensive to travel, and uh, we need we need people to buy our chocolate. With so many flavors to choose from, the chocolate sales are very diverse. Yet some flavors sell out quicker than others. Like I don't know who doesn't like caramel. It's amazing, amazing flavor. Many chocolate boxes were ordered by BMB in order to sell. They are moving out fast. Now the real purpose for these sales is not to just make some cold hard cash. It's for getting BMB to DC. You know what sales are? Sales are great so far. We have sold almost 150 boxes in just three weeks. Uh, there's a lot of varieties of chocolate that we're selling. Uh, there's caramel that's very popular, uh, crisp, almond, dark chocolate, milk, uh, wafer. So I mean, people should keep buying chocolate from your favorite BMB cast and crew. So you can uh, send BMB to DC. Make sure just to buy my chocolate. Mine, nobody else's. Anyway, from b and I'm Casey Farr. So buy some chocolate and send b and to DC. Be sure to tune in next week when we'll be back with all new packages created by the b and students to bring you inside the parts of your community that we don't always get to see. For a midweek update, I'm Riley Freed. And I'm Brianna Santiago, and we'll see you next week.